Grand Solar Flash Update for October 27th. Living in 3D as God in the flesh. We're now in the calm before the storm. Things are going to get crazy. As always, question your reality and then change it. Thunderwizard.com is the website that fully supports this YouTube channel. Please go to that website, check out all of the different ways that you can subscribe, and take a look at the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong, the higher dimensional energy practices like the Five Element Maoshan Spirit Fighting. I also have personal mentorship spiritual counseling and live zoom group classes all can be found in the subscription sections check out the shop if you're looking for video courses and energy practices to help you shift up to the new frequency of 5d be aware that a brand new meditation to become the ruling god of your universe the atum meditation that is now available in the shop. It is a guided meditation. I take you through the process of how God created him, her, itself. This meditation is free for subscribers at the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong or higher, or you can just simply go to the shop and get it. Always please remember the live guided free interdimensional meditations which are available every Wednesday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, you can check out past live meditations in the YouTube channel in the live section. So, we are going to be talking about living in the third dimension as God in the flesh. And you're going to need this more than ever because we are headed for some big, crazy stuff, both from the solar energy perspective as well as just the deep state dark forces, what they have planned for planet Earth and how we can stop that. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard. I'm so glad that you are here. So I do have some things uh, on a list, I'm going to be talking about, yep, I've got this living as God on earth. I'll go through those things. Please stay through the end of the video for that. I almost called it a meditation. Please stay through the entire video. We'll get to all that stuff. I want to just talk a little bit about my mindset uh, into coming into this video. So, we are in the solar flash event. So people wonder, is there going to be a solar flash event? It is happening. We are in the midst of it. So here's a way to look at it. And we have proof for this. It's called the Mandela effect. It, the Mandela effect is proof of what I'm going to be talking about. So the solar flash event is changing everything. Uh, and the solar flash event is, in fact, deleting this version of Earth. The version of Earth that we have been living on for at least the last 13,000 years. We could maybe say it was longer than that. But really, the whole idea of the third dimensional planet Earth, that experiment has come to an end. The universe, the gods, the light beings, whatever words you want to use, these beings came up with a very powerful laboratory for consciousness. And gods, infinite deities, needed a place to go where they could really learn how to focus on their spiritual power of consciousness and of creating, manifesting. Now, when you're an infinite deity, it's easy. You can just snap your fingers and yawn and you're farting out galaxies. It's, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to create things. 
but uh, these deities needed a place where they could go and learn, really learn how to flex and create from the deepest aspect of themselves. And those deities have come to earth and they live out this third dimensional uh, virtual reality video game. You are one of those deities. You don't know it if you're sitting here. And I'm not talking about people who are deluded. Don't get me wrong. There are people who get wrapped up in the 3D matrix and they become deluded. And they will talk about being all powerful gods, but then they'll go back and forth between being the hugest victims. Have you ever noticed a lot of the people who are into the idea of exiting the matrix are also the same people who talk about being the chosen ones and why nobody likes you and everybody's out to get you. It's because you're the true God of this world. You're the chosen one of God and that's why they hate you. That's insanity. That's just Looney Tunes. Those are just really seriously damaged people that are lost in a delusion within the delusion. So if you want to know what human being insanity is, we're already in this delusion of this third dimensional perception of reality. But you can be happy and functional in the game. So the people who get trapped inside a delusion while being in a delusion, that's what we call people who are insane. And so a lot of people conflate it. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. You can do it however you need to do it. And there's ways out of it. And we're going to talk about that when we look at this list. But the truth of the matter is, is that you are an infinite deity. You are incredibly powerful and you came here for one reason, so that you could learn how to become an even more powerful deity. And we have learned everything that we can learn from this. Now, in order for this this virtual reality video game to actually teach us something, there has to be an actual risk. There has to be real risks that we experience. And I can say that we perfected that. This is the most risky planet in the entire multiverse because the, the very real risk of getting trapped again into your own matrix within the matrix where you get lost in your own narcissism and your own self-devaluation and the pain and the misery and all of that that is very a very real risk meaning that it has to be so real that some people will get trapped in that well that happened and it happened to such a degree that we have unbelievably evil people who are in complete control of this not of the matrix they're in control of the consensus the consensual belief about what society is they are in complete control of that and the the level of psychopathic horrifically evil things that they are doing are beyond comprehension. They're much worse than what you think. I mean, you listen to people who, you know, uh, are, are awakened to it. You know, a lot of people on YouTube and on Rumble, um, you know, in other places, X, you know, people are waking up to the fact that there really is this cabal of extremely rich people who run the banks and run the corporations and run things like the World Health Organization and the CDC and the you know NATO and you know and all of the countries I mean that that's that's a real thing and all of the stuff that's been going on with all of the people who have been dispossessed by you know the natural disasters that are happening the wars and the the evil greedy people behind all of this stuff the the fact that we live in a society that is a ponzi scheme just that in and of itself the whole idea of you know what how banks function that's evil that's horrible and evil but that is just the surface 
It is much, much, much worse than that. And so because of that, because we built this game really well, that there are people that got trapped in it on both sides, the abusers and the victims, that uh, was crafted so well that the, the multiverse has decided, okay, we, we have to bring this to an end. We have to delete this level of the game. So that's the, the good news is that there's a level up. There's a higher level to this game that's more exciting, that's more fun, that um, if you've been in this level of the game and you get up to that higher level, I mean, the, the amount of, of divine power you're going to experience, I mean, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could just flash it from my mind into yours. I've seen it. I've been there. I keep going back there. It is, uh, it is, I mean, I can't even put it into words. The level of divine power that you are going to experience is cannot be explained in the third dimension. But I guarantee you it's coming. For those of you who are going to shift up to the higher version of this game. So, um, of course, not everybody will choose. You listen to my words very carefully. Not everybody will choose to do that. And that is sad for them. But there's going to be alternate versions of the game. And it's going to be sort of like, you know, there was a Star Trek episode where the hollow deck characters came out and took over and they were evil and horrible. And um, somebody figured out how to lure them into uh, a holodeck that took them into a you know their own private hard drive and they pulled the hard drive out of the computer and the thing was self-generating and you know they're going through their universe you know so those characters ended up going into the safe little um you know uh, a cordoned off hard drive where they couldn't harm anybody well that's hap that's going to happen as well so the people that don't choose to shift up. That's where they're going to go. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to work based on everything I've been told and I've been shown and then just following my, uh, my, you know, my, my common sense about it, which, you know, anyway, I don't know if this is true or not, but this is what I think is probably going to happen. I know for a fact that there's going to be that higher what we call 5d that higher frequency it's the, the the next level of the game i know that that's coming when how exactly i don't know that will it happen in my lifetime probably but i'm prepared to spend you know the rest of my 3d life if necessary but i know it's coming the there's going to be a version of the third dimension and i believe I believe it will be a slightly better version than this, but it will be dystopian, meaning the banks are going to fail, the governments are going to fail, and people are going to go m back into more of a communal, tribal, you know, living in one place, living off of the land, uh, and finding out what's important, but still living in, in, in a 3D kind of a world. And then, of course, I do believe that there will be, as I said, that, that you know, safe little, you know, programmed hard drive where the victims and the abusers will go. Because you can't have one without the other. And I, I'm not trying to take away from anybody that's been victimized by this horrific uh, you know, the, the current rulers of this consensus. But you can choose, any time you can choose to shift out of that. You may have to work at it, but you can do that. And I'm going to be sharing with you in this list ways that you're going to be able to do that if you feel that is who you are. All right, so this new higher version of the game, this is coming. However, right now, what I want to share with you is what has been revealed to me. So if you're doing these live guided interdimensional meditations, which I hope you are, and if you're not, please come and do them. 
every Wednesday and Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Even if you don't do the live ones, go do the recorded ones. F do them. I mean, there, there's, there's, it's very powerful. And whether you, you're aware of it or not, I guarantee you it is shifting you in ways you don't even understand. Sorry. I don't know why they keep sending me this. I keep blocking as many of these phone numbers trying to get me to vote in this ridiculous election. All right. So um, in between, okay, so what I was going to say is that bear in mind that what happens in the astral realm is on a different time, I want to say timeline. Most people don't, the world isn't split up in different timelines. Like there's a timeline where you're doing this and this timeline and that. And I, I don't think that's how it works. I think there's different dimensions and we have different versions of ourselves in different dimensions, but I don't believe there's multiple, you know, side by side timelines. What was shown to me is that in each dimension, you are living in a state of continuous probability. So in other words, each moment that manifests is a is a probable reality. So you have infinite probable realities. That's different from infinite timelines. But it really does matter if you look at it as infinite timelines, it's, it functions exactly the same. Your reality is manifested based on the probability that you choose. Now the challenging part is that you're, you are choosing your probabilities unconsciously. So if you have fear-based victim mentality stuff, which most of us have because we're in the third dimension, that's why you're continuously choosing things that don't work for you. Illness, poverty, uh, abuse, you're choosing it on an unconscious level. I mean, uh, when we get here to the, to the list, I'll tell you ways that you can hack that and work through that. So we have infinite probabilities that are manifested. Now, in the astral realm, which is where we go every time we do these live guided meditations, or when you're doing, if you're doing interdimensional meditation as I taught it, if you do the Atum meditation, this one here, which you can find at thunderwizard.com, if you do these meditations, you are in the astral realm. Time is different there. The beings that live in the astral realm that is their reality. So you're sitting here in your reality. And I've got this. This is real. If I smash it on my head, it's going to hurt. I'm going to have an experience of reality here. I can tell myself it's not real all I want. But nevertheless, my experience is that it's, it's real and that time is real. All that stuff I experience is being real. Um, but in the astral realm, the beings that live there, their reality is real and ours is the, the dream. When we meditate and we go to these, you know, these astral realms, it's like we're in a dream. Maybe, you, you know, what, what happens with me, yours, your experience may, might be different. But what's ha what happens with me is that I can s a visualize a little bit, but most of what I go through is conceptual and... Uh, you know, feelings and intents. But, you know, this last one that we did, um, if you remember, there was a point where we were sending energy to the sun. And then I said, on the count of three, we're going to imagine the sun just orgasmically exploding and releasing joy to the earth, if you remember that. Well, I did that. And when I said count to three and I said what happened, I felt it. I mean, I, I felt it hit me from, you know, I felt it come from outside of our 3D, uh, you, um, you know, our, our whatever, our, our gravity field, our, our atmosphere. I felt it come in and hit me and blew up in my, I mean, it was very blissful and orgasmic. That's the kind of stuff that happens with me. Uh, the light beings have set me up so I'm hooked up to what is happening out there. So that's how I know that really happened, because I felt it. Now, 
when is it going to get to earth? There's oftentimes a lag time. You, we will do things out in that reality. And the beings out there treat that as being absolutely real. And what's happening down here, you don't get it. Time is lagging for you. You guys are in, in, a, in a, a dream. You don't see what's really happening. That's the way they talk to me. You don't see what's really happening. You're in the dream. We're in the real world. So when they tell me something, that this is happening and that is happening, they talk about it as though it's a real fact. And I go, I don't see it. And they, you know, they laugh. They go, you're in, you're in an, an illusion. Of course you don't see it. In real reality, this is what's happening. So what happens in that real reality, whether it's a higher dimension or the astral realm or whatever it is, what's really happening there is going to happen here. It's going to affect this place and things are going to change. So I can tell you that the timeline is different. They are already in the new reality. They are experiencing it and seeing it and they're letting me know what's coming. In fact, uh, it wasn't too long ago after one of these meditations, uh, a light being showed up and said, you know, because they know that it's tough. It's tough for me too. And they know that sometimes I get very disillusioned you know and it's you know it's tough to slog through this thing and uh being said i want to show you something this is going to blow your mind and they said i'm going to take you to the world that you're already living in that you're going to live in and took me to the the 5d world and it was i can't even put into words how absolutely amazing it was and so I believe that. I believe them. In any case, the point is, is that things are about to get really bonkers crazy. We know that we are shifting these different probabilities. Like this reality is being deleted. We have proof for that. The proof is called the Mandela effect. The fact that you can have two past histories side by side you know again my favorite one is um kennedy's car i know for a fact i know for an absolute 100 percent fact kennedy was shot in a normal two bench seat car i know it i told i told, I, I, I grew up watching the Sapruder film over and over and over and over and over and over again pictures films I mean, there's no way that I could have misremembered that. And yet you look at the Sapruder film, you know, history will, will show you this really weird car with these three bench seats. And yet there's all of this uh, residual, like there are still pictures of the car with just two seats in it. There's uh, the film of the, uh, not the CIA, but the Secret Service um you know, made a film where they they uh, were investigating what happened, and they had the exact car and the exact place, and they they um, you know redid the entire scenario, trying to figure out what could have happened. And they used a car with just two bench seats. They wouldn't have done that if that's what didn't happen. So I'm looking back, my 61 years of age. I'm looking back. There are two histories now. I know what the real one was. History is changing. That is proof that this third dimensional reality is being deleted. That's proof. So big stuff is coming. And it's important that we know that. That we know that we are in a program that is being deleted. That means do not get attached to anything here. Don't bother. It is going to cause, you know, the pain that it normally causes when you become attached to the physical world, that, that causes pain. Every spiritual practice tells you that. Every religion even tells you that. Even the ones I don't like tell you that. But the pain that comes from being attached to this physical world we're in now is going to be a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand times worse. Don't waste your time being attached 
about anything, money, reputation, safety, career, don't waste your time on it. This program is being deleted. It's, it's a bad investment. All right. Well, let's see if we can get me out of the weeds here and get me onto some topics. So 3D Earth is a virtual reality video game. You are an avatar. That is important. You don't know that. We talked about that already. I mean, I think this is real. I hit it. You know, it hurts my noggin. I have this experience that everything is real. But the part of me that's having all those experiences is, a, is an avatar. It's a, a program. It's a program within the program. And when you have when you play virtual reality video games, you create an avatar. Your avatar is a fictional character. It has limitations and strengths. If you're the shaman or if you're the warrior or if you're the paladin or if you're the the wizard or the dwarf or the you know whatever. Whatever your character is, they have strengths and weaknesses. So you know if you're playing the game, you know that you can't go up against a uh, seven level mage with superpowers, magical superpowers, if you're just a, a, a warrior, you know, you know you can't fight against his magic, right? So you know that if you do that, you're going to experience your avatar getting, you know, screwed up or deleted or knocked back, whatever the issue is. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm, I'm about to start telling you that you are God. Remember, I told you that in the beginning. So we have this, this conflict of perception where our perception is, uh, you know, I still got a, you know, I'm still 61. I get wrinkles under my eyes. You know, I'm, I live in Florida. Something about Florida, I just, I get, I get fat here. I'm gaining weight. I'm getting older. No matter how much I exercise or surf or eat right or all, you know, I mean, and as healthy as I am, I'm still, I've got the limitations of my avatar. I'm a human being. Balding, gray hair. I still got all those limitations. So when light beings continuously tell me that, you know, how, what a powerful deity I am, you know, that I create universes. You know, if I told you some of the shit they told me, you would either not believe me or think that I was deluded. So I, you know, I have this, why are you guys telling me this? I mean, I, I clearly am human. I, you know, I, if I stub my toe, it hurts. I bleed if I stub my toe. I, you know, if I, if I eat the wrong food, I, I get backed up. I mean, I, I have all these limitations. And yet when I'm out there in these, doing these meditations, the things that I'm capable of accomplishing are far beyond anything that's happening in this third dimension. And I am convinced, they've convinced me, that out there, I am unbelievably, fantastically powerful. And it's, and it's too much power to fit within this game. You could, I couldn't fit all of the power of who I am out there into this 3D avatar. It wouldn't fit. My avatar would explode. Wouldn't, wouldn't be able to handle it. So I want, I want you to understand that your experience in the third dimension is an experience of perception. And it's the experience of your pre-programmed computer program. If you want to look at your physical body and your identity, your consciousness, your brain, your emotions, your reactions, your your identity, your, your psychology of who you are. I did this, this is what happened to me. And this is, you know, like I, I get, I have very low patience for people who are hostile, like hostile drivers. Uh, some guy was, you know, was driving up my rear end just for a little bit and I didn't like it. I pulled over and got out of the way. But in my, my fantasy was, is that I was going to pull him over and I was going to threaten him and I was going to scare the hell out of him. And that's my avatar's weakness that's been programmed into it. It has not, I, it's meaningless. It has nothing to do with 
who I really am. And so that helps me. When I want to do something stupid, I go, you know what, that's my avatar's limitations. That's not who I am. And so when I realize how powerful I am, I go, you know, the last thing I need to do is waste my time arguing with some idiot because of the way he drives. So I want you to get that idea in your head. Because as long as you believe that you are limited by your, or I should say, to the extent that you believe that you are limited, by your third dimensional avatar, to that extent, you will experience pain. You will experience a feeling of weakness, of, of impotence. You won't have, you will want more money, you will want more fame, you will want more power, want more love, want more success. And all of those things are things that are your character has been programmed to want. It's all a game. It's an illusion. It's a matrix. Don't be attached to it. Now, what we need to do is become awakened to the God that we are. That's what that, uh, that Atom meditation is all about. Is to, you know, every time you do that, you can awaken more deeply to the God that you are. Then, what we want is to be attached to our godhood outside of this third dimension and be connected to that, operating from that, while actively participating in this 3D virtual reality game. That's what you do when you play video games. You're completely, totally into the character, but at any point you can hit pause and get up and go get something to eat or go drive to the store. And whatever, you know, craziness is going on, your character is about to get eaten by the, you know, the demon wolf from the seventh hell and level 16. You can pause it and it doesn't affect you. It's like, yeah, I'm just having fun. And you can get to that point where that's all that's happening here. Then we can really accomplish things. Because until we make that shift... That is what we are capable of doing. Because remember, this version of the video game is being deleted. So the rules don't apply anymore. The rules used to be that when you put on your virtual reality goggles, which means you incarnate into the 3D, that's it. You're going to forget everything about who you are outside of this realm. And that's the rules. You don't get to remember. You have to really believe because if you don't really believe, then you won't be forced to find your true authentic self. That's the rules of this game. But now that this game is being deleted, that rule doesn't apply anymore. We know this because if you've been doing what I've been doing, you know, the, the, the crazy things... You know, if you want to go back and watch what happened to me or read my book, you know, go to go to michaelwilliamdenny.com and get uh, my books, two of them about my extraterrestrial experiences. You can read the craziness. You can go back to the videos that I was making in the summer of 2022, how I was completely losing my mind because what was happening to me, and looking back on it, you know, with 2020 hindsight, what was happening to me was not normal. And uh, very few, if any, humans had gone through that. And the human mind is not capable of tolerating what I was being shown. But the reason why I was being shown all that about who I was was because this version is being deleted. And I'm, I've been recruited by the powers that be to help delete this. If you want to know what we're doing, every time we do this meditation, we're deleting more and more of the code in this third dimension. That's why if you do it, like I, when I do it, sometimes the next day I wake up and I feel kind of like depressed and, you know, sad and, and you know, and, you know, but th that's because my third dimensional self a little bit more has been deleted. Another thing that used to happen 
And this is, and I just watched another one of these on YouTube. I, I love watching um, near-death experience. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, some of them are nonsense. Some of them are, are BS. People making stuff up just trying to get uh, attention. I can tell when somebody has a real experience. But uh, beside, that's beside the point. The uh, I just recently watched one. And again, what ends up happening in near-death experiences before a couple of years ago is that when somebody, you know, they, they, they uh, temporarily die, their spirit goes up to heaven or whatever it is, they're, they meet some version of, you know, their higher self or Jesus or Buddha or their grandfather or something like that. And they'll have a life review, blah, blah, blah. And they're oftentimes given a choice because they can sense that, that they're in some sort of like transition waiting room. Even if it's a beautiful heavenly garden, they know it's, it's a transitional place. And they'll be given an option sometimes. If you want to stay here, go through that door and you won't believe what's on the other side of that. And they can see and feel and hear that something on the other side of that door is just phenomenal and amazing. And, um, of course, they choose to come back. But they'll be told, if you go through that door, you, you can't go back. <laughs> you, you can't go back as a human. So if you're going to go back, you're going to have to make that decision here. We'll send you back. And you can live out your life and learn a bunch of this, blah, 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 whatever it is. Or you can go through that door End this life if you want and, you know, really, really enjoy what it's like to be to be a spirit being again. And I'm here to tell you that that is over. That was a safety valve. Because uh, if people had near death experiences and went on the other side of that door and came back, they wouldn't be able to function. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be able to fit into this world and they wouldn't be able to just do their normal 3D human thing and be able to learn all their lessons. I mean, it would be, you know, it doesn't work. When, you, when you're out of the game to that degree and you come back, the game is, it's just a ridiculous game. That's what was happening to me. And that is what I am suggesting that you experience. Because this version is being deleted. And so what, it, what is on the other side of that door is your deity self. When you expand beyond being a created being. Because in those transitional spaces, if you've noticed, you know, Jesus will be there or Buddha will be there or, you know, St. Peter or an angel. Those are things that are attached to human religion. And so they haven't left their human, even though they're in a higher you know, ethereal state, they still are, they've got their human, their human stuff going on. Because once you go through that door, you find out you're Jesus, you're God, you're Shiva. You are so far beyond anything that can fit into this third dimension. And I was shown that, I was given that, they told me I was among the first. So, uh, you know, other people are now starting to experience that. And those who have experienced it have the same kinds of experiences I do. They, they, they really struggle thinking they've lost their mind. They really struggle with just, you know, doing the normal thing, going and working a job and paying bills. They, they struggle with that because they know it's just nonsense. It's, this is meaningless. You've been to the other side. You've been to the higher dimensional stuff. You've created your 5D world. You've been there. You talk to these beings, experience the energy and the power of these higher dimensional beings. After that, you don't want to come back. I mean, this is, this is just a boring shadow 2D game. And I mean that in all seriousness. You see everything in two dimensions. You, you know that you live in the third dimension. But the truth is, you experience everything in two dimensions. I mean, your eyes are a two-dimensional screen. You don't see things in 3D. You see things, it looks exactly the same as looking at a screen on a television. You experience everything in, in two dimensions. 
This really is a 2D, just just a, a, a program. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. So, um, 3D Earth is a virtual reality video game. You are an avatar. Your avatar must follow the parameters of the game. So, here's the thing that got me is that when they kept telling me that I was God, that I was powerful and that I would when I would go out into these meditations and I would chant these mantras down here and, and I was able to change literally change planet earth and things like the sun would obey my commands and you know the earth came to me and worshipped me as a god and said she was my daughter and all that crazy stuff and then I come back in 3D and I have you know I have to do normal 3D stuff. I, I'm still limited. I'm clearly not. I mean, how is it that I'm, you know, king of earth? And uh, how, how is that? And I still have to be human. It's because this is a virtual reality video game. And we come back here expecting to be, you know, the virtual reality version of God, which is just another program. The Abrahamic God is just a program. That's what people mean when they call God the Demiurge. When people talk about the Demiurge, what they're really talking about is the 3D programmed computer game version of God. So wanting to be God and control everything, and you're still in the game. This is what the elites haven't figured out. And this is why they're so miserable. You know, if you want to see the most miserable people on the planet, you know, just do a little bit of digging into the lives of uh, celebrities. They're absolutely, totally miserable. Look at Michael Jackson, you know, before he left this world. Absolutely miserable. P. Diddy, go talk to him. Find out how happy he is right now. Uh, the elites... We don't even need to get into that. The elites, the, the billionaires control. I mean, how happy is a person who has tens of billions of dollars, who has a fleet of, I mean, I, I just saw this today. I mean, I, the Facebook guy, whatever his name is. He's got a fleet of yachts. I mean, you, you know, I, and you want more money. You know, at, at a certain point, it's like it's, you know, something's wrong with you if you can't be happy with the abundance that you have. Something's really wrong. You have to be incredibly deeply wounded. So wanting to be God in this 3D is just as much a waste of time. You want to be God? Do it in your higher dimensional astral self. You can be God there. You can literally create realities and you can change this one. Now, this one is being deleted. So if you leave it and try and make yourself big and rich and all that without even getting into the whole idea of, you know, your karmic path in this life, etc., it would be a waste of time. It's a, it's a it's a bad investment. So don't even worry about it. All right. So your avatar must follow the parameters of the game. You can only reprogram the game from the soul. Now, that is a couple of things. One is when we do interdimensional meditation, we are leaving, uh, at least our perception and our consciousness is leaving this third dimensional reality. And so you'll find that you don't want to do normal 3D human things. You, you, you start wanting to go off and experience all the beauty of your soul. You don't want to do stupid things. You don't want to... Go, you know, track people down on the on the freeway and uh, threaten them or, you know, become rich or invest in stock markets. That stuff doesn't enter your mind. Um, so that's uh, one way. You, you have to operate from the soul. But the other one is, is that even when you're walking around in your 3D avatar perception, you still have to operate from the soul. So the soul never does anything that is harmful to itself or to any other conscious being. So again, want, you want to, you know, you want to become the richest person in the world. In this reality, you can't do that without stepping on other people. We've set up this Ponzi scheme. You can't ra rise up in the Ponzi scheme without throwing other people down at the bottom. 
So the whole normal human 3D idea of fame and prosperity and all that, your soul isn't going to want that. Okay, so you can only reprogram the game from the soul. Energy practices, 12 steps, and mantras hack into the soul. Now, I put that in there because I'm as 3D as anybody else. Uh, and if you've been following my channel, I have never once, I have never once presented myself as anything other than an average screwed up human being. I have the same faults. Trust me, I have more problems than most of you. I am more screwed up inside my head psychologically than the majority of you. I have all of the weaknesses. I still have all the same ego nonsense. I still have insecurities. Still, even after, you know, 40 years of spiritual practice, and I still have all that human stuff. And I'm here to tell you that any spiritual teacher that presents themselves any other way is conning you and or is deluded. I could name names. I'm not going to. Any spiritual teacher that doesn't share with you how they accomplish something from their human weakness is a waste of your time. Don't even waste your time listening to them because they're trapped in the matrix. So uh, energy practices hack into the soul. Energy practices are a hack because when you can tap into higher dimensions and you feel that energy, it gives you an advantage. Now, I there used to be a time when I could use, for instance, the Maoshan Five Element Spirit Fighting Practices. You don't know what I'm talking about. Go to thunderwizard.com. Look for them in the shop. Um, that was a hack hundred years ago, you could use that because, you know, in, in southern China a hundred years ago, it was a dangerous place. You had to be able to fight to the death to be able to, you know, get access to water, or, you know, just walk down the street. And it was, it was a difficult place to be. So um, those hacks gave you the ability to survive so that you could function. You could use those. You could use your your spiritual powers against other people in ways that we would look at negatively now because that's how people needed to survive. So uh, nowadays, we can use these to hack into that energy and feel that energy so that we can awaken more and more spiritually. I say that because my teacher's teacher, he was without a doubt the most powerful martial artist I've ever seen. There's, I mean, it, you, believe me or don't believe me, you could put that guy in a room with 20 other people with guns and knives and he'd be the only one that would walk out. That's how powerful he was. But on a personal, psychological, emotional level, he was a wreck. He was a child. He was a narcissist. He was a bully. And yet he'd left his body numerous times and experienced that stuff hacking into the higher dimension doesn't make you which i thought it did it doesn't make you spiritually evolved the actions that you take operating from your soul operating from your integrity those things give you spiritual power but the spiritual hack of energy practices is incredibly helpful because it's really, really hard to see through the illusion of the third dimension. And it's really, really hard when you feel yourself having all of the physical 3D limitations. So when you do energy practices, you start to gain powers where you get to bend the rules and go beyond and you get energy and you can feel the power and feel the bliss of the energy. And that is a very helpful tool. By itself, it's not going to give you, it's not going to give you enlightenment, but it will give you the ability to focus on the spiritual because your, your body and your mind are going to try and tell you to be rich, be famous, have a fleet of yachts. My 
he's dead now, I can talk about him, but my uh, Mao Shan teacher, my direct teacher, he kept trying to use the spirit fighting so that he could become rich and famous. And you can imagine what happened. I mean, the exact opposite happened. He became very psychologically and emotionally disturbed. And he, by the time that he left this world, he was not doing well on the financial or the physical level. And when I met him, he was doing fine. So you can't use these things for the third dimension. If you try, it'll backfire on you. But if you use the power that you get to help yourself go beyond the needs of the 3D, money, fame, security, which is all an illusion anyway, you will gain real power. So this is why I recommend this. This is the path that I use for myself. Not because, because I, I you know, want to call me a wimp. I'm a wimp. I need the hacks. I need it. It helps me. I just got to focus it in the right direction. But I offer them to you. These have been secret for thousands of years. I'm literally putting them up on the the internet and you can watch videos and do it yourself. I, I recommend that you use those practices. Thunderwizard.com uh, The 12 steps. Now the 12 steps to 5D on my channel is free. Go to the playlists and click the 12 steps to 5D. It is the single most powerful human path to enlightenment and freedom from the third dimension that has ever existed. And I, I could go on and on and on, but I made a video series on it. Do them. Even better, most, if not everybody listening to me qualifies for some 12-step program. Uh, whether it be, you know, you've got, you, you grew up in a codependent dysfunctional home, you're an alcoholic, a drug addict, you're a codependent, you're a narcissist, you're, you've got, you know, there's, there's, I'm, I'm really, I'm being a human being now. People are at some level of codependence and addiction. So I recommend that you do the 12 steps to 5D. If you can find a program like, you know, there's a few out there. If you want, message me. I'll give you a few you can go check out. But the 12 steps to 5D is, is without a doubt, the most powerful thing that you can do to, to overcome your third dimensional limitations, to, to give you the power to do the impossible. And I'm telling you this because it's absolutely imperative that everybody who wants to shift up no longer let the 3D craziness the fear game gets you. You don't have to worry about money. You don't have to worry about career. You don't have to worry about social status. You don't have to worry about your social credit score or your credit score. You don't have to worry about that. If you, I know because listen, that hits me every day. Every day I get hit with those things. And um, I'm using these hacks so that I don't listen to that. The people that are, that are the most miserable, that, that have gotten all the, that have, you know, that are doing all the things, they really believe the 3D lie that's being given to them. So you need something to take you out of that. 12 Steps to 5D is the most powerful human practice there is. I highly recommend it. Follow it on my channel. It's free. It costs you nothing. Mantras. Now we do the mantras every time that we do these live guided interdimensional meditations. Most powerful energetic practice for pers personal practice is to be doing some of the, any one of the Maoshan practices, which is, includes the a Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong. That's a, the combination of Maoshan energy practices plus Kundalini Yoga plus mantra. You put those three together, you have the most powerful energetic spiritual practice humanly possible. There isn't one out there that's more powerful than the stuff that I teach. There isn't one. They don't exist. So the most powerful thing to do is a combination of that, you know, maybe not do it every day. If you want to do it every day, you can. But having a regular discipline, disciplined practice of that, it's going to open up your ability to connect. What is going to be the next level of human is 
going to be a, a more improved version of what I am. Now I'm in the I'm in 3D, so that does have its effects and limitations on. Me. But I am completely connected to to the higher dimensions. I get communications all day every day. I can feel the the light beings communicating. I can feel their energy. Um, I can almost 24 hours a day close my eyes and ask a question and get an answer. I can I can get I'm I'm not a normal human anymore. And they told me this. They told me we're you're the you're a hybrid. We're what they mean by hybrid is not what you think. It's not you know half alien, half human. I'm energetically a hybrid. I'm not just a human being that's in this closed cell with my chakras and my, you know, limited. I mean, I'm hooked up. I'm completely connected. Everybody's going to be like that. We're going to be living in a world where everybody's going to be hooked up. They're going to be hooked up to the gods, to the ancestors, to each other. There's never. There's not going to be any separation. Why am I telling you that? Let's find out. Uh, the mantra. So uh, the, these three things I'm telling you to do is the most powerful way to begin that process of changing your DNA, your chakra system, your uh, energy meridian system so that you can become this God on earth. This walking. I mean, this is the, the I mean, the most powerful of shamans. I mean, I, I, I know I sound like I'm bragging, um, but it's just, it's where everybody's going. I have, I'm more powerfully connected than any shaman up until this point. They've had to use other things. I don't have to do that. And it's just normal for me. And, and this is just normal human living for me. That's what it's going to be like for everybody. If, if you want to get that process started, do those things where you're doing the Maoshan energy practices and working the 12 steps to 5D or whatever equivalent you have and doing mantras. The mantras, you know, simple one is Om Namah Shivaya. You can do that. Any mantra. Chant runes. I don't care. That's, that, that's in the same category as mantras. The Hul breath, the Huar breath. You can also go to thunderwizard.com and there's an advanced Huar breath technique. Doing that combined with the other stuff I just said. Um, there's literally nothing more powerful on this earth. Nothing. Those stuff have, have all come directly from higher dimensions. So, energy practice, 12 steps, mantras to hack into the soul. These are hacks to get you into prepared for the next, when 5D hits. When 5D hits, um, I'm pretty certain it's going to be an easy, just a, a shift for me. Staying in 3D uh, is not easy. It's not easy at all. I tried to leave. You guys know that. On October 6th, I thought it was coming, and I did everything to leave, and it wasn't my time to shift to 5D yet. Staying here? That's not so, it's not so easy. But when that 5D shift comes, it's going to be a very easy shift for me because of all the things that I've just said. The average person, the people who aren't hooked up, who don't have these hacks, some of them are going to have a more difficult time. and It's going to be very shocking. They're going to have to go through the the shock and the, you know, the feeling of completely losing and being shift, you know, split into, they're going to have to go through all that stuff I went through a couple of years ago. So if you're one of these people that's on this channel and you're doing these practices, it's very likely that you've been chosen and or your soul chose to get yourself prepared so that when the shift happens, you're going to be one of the frontline workers, you know, to to help people, the first responders, to help people shift. The people who are doing the work now are going to be the ones that are going to be, if, if having, you know, authority means something to you, the people who are running the 5D world are going to be the people who are doing this work now. 
All right. So uh, be as attached to the game story as much as a video game. This is really important. This is something that I, I do. I'm really working on. Living in my 5D deity essence. And at the same time, when I'm down here, I know I walk around in a human body. It's 61 years old and all the limitations that it has. Right? I got X amount of money in my 3D bank account. I've got, you know, I've got all that, all those limitations. That is undeniable. I used to, used to, I used to think I was crazy because how could I be this powerful 5D God and yet I got to, you know, wipe my rear end. I don't understand. I must be losing it. I must be crazy. No, this is a video game. My character has limitations. The guy who's out there, you know, playing the game on the controller, he's not bound by those limitations. I'm not bound by these limitations. It's my, my avatar. That's all it is. So only be attached to it as you would be attached to what's happening in a video game that you play. Yeah, you've got some attachment to it. You want things to go well. I, listen, I want to be comfortable. I want to be comfortable and happy. I don't want to be in pain or hungry or cold or, you know, I don't want any of that. I want to, so it's okay to have all the, you know, the physical stuff and to have the, the things and be prosperous and comfortable. That, that's okay. It's good to have your, your video game character comfortable and doing well within the game, but that's all it is. It's going to be deleted. You're going to be playing the game one day and file not found. It's going to be deleted one day. So don't get attached. Attach yourself to your higher dimensional self while you're playing the game. The more that you exit the matrix, the faster the game changes. The more that you do these interdimensional meditations, the more you do the atom meditation, the more you do... The 90-day challenge, the awakening the immortals, the five element spirit fighting. No, don't get obsessed. Still be normal, be healthy, eat, sleep, socialize, have fun, relax. You know, have a fun game while you're in it. But the more that you exit this game and do the interdimensional meditations or any of the other stuff I mentioned, the more that you do that, the faster this game will delete the faster and the more powerful and the easier the shift is going to be. Uh, seek to erase this game and imagine the next level up. I sort of tapped into this, but in other words, you know, my, I, I gave you the example of my Maoshan teacher. He's gone. He's no longer in this, in this video game. I'm sure he's up there, you know, in a whole different realm. But he completely missed the boat. He thought he could use his spiritual power in the third dimensional game. He thought he could use it to get powerful and rich and all that stuff because he thought that was important. And it didn't work. So don't waste your time on it, as I said earlier. So what you should be doing is seeking to erase this game. In other words, he wasn't trying to erase the game. He was trying to play the game. He, he took the game as meaning something. He took money and status, fame, fortune as meaning something. He got wrapped up in the game. He believed it. He got wrapped up in his 3D avatar. And I have to tell you, I've seen it three times. There's another person I won't mention, but another person I've seen who had access to this kind of power. And, and all three of them went crazy. And they went crazy because they used the spiritual practices for 3D gain because of their insecurities. And if they had the ability to accept all of their fear and their pain and their loneliness and their psychological issues and their insecurities and realize that's just part of the game. Don't let it get you down. Act as though you're a god, meaning that, that you're free of all that. Yeah, you're going to have all kinds of feelings. People are going to hurt your feelings. You're going to, ha I have ego issues every single day. You're going to have fear. All that stuff is going to happen. But you know, I go, wow, that's interesting. There's my 3D avatar doing its thing. It's, it's always going to do that as long as you're in that game. But 
seek to escape it. Not escape it through drugs, alcohol, sex, video games. Seek to escape into your divinity. And look forward to the deletion of this 3D game. Maybe, maybe we'll be here for a couple more decades. But if you've got that attitude, nothing can hold you back. Nothing can hold you down. Because we're getting to that point where the only thing that matters is our connection to higher dimensions. It's the only thing that's going to matter going forward. Huge changes are coming. Be aware. Live for each day. So you only get one day at a time. That's always been the case, but we've been able to delude ourselves into thinking, you know, like when I was a kid, you, you know, you grew up and you went to college or you went to some kind of technical school and you got a degree or a certification and then you got a job for, you know, 40, 50 years and then you retired. That's what you did. People were looking for security. If you had a degree and you had a job, you were good for the rest of your life. And that stopped working in the 90s. So uh, how did I get on that? So um, live for just each day. You have enough money today. You got a roof over your head. You got food in the refrigerator. You've got transportation. You've got a place to sleep. You've got everything that you need for this 24-hour period. You're good to go. I don't care how much debt you're in. I don't care whatever fear you have about the future. The future hasn't got here yet. That's always been true, but it's more true now than ever before because watch what's going to happen. Talk to the people in, in the Carolinas. You know, before Milton, they had a great house. Talk to the people in Gaza. Talk to the people in Ukraine. Talk to, talk to those people. There's other things that are coming. They have plans for us. Just today, I was looking and seeing all the chemtrails. They have plans. And they, if they're given the opportunity, they will unleash those plans. I'm not going to scare you, so I won't go beyond that. And that's one of the reasons we're doing these live guided interdimensional meditations. When I go up there, I am sending energy to cut them off at the legs take away all of their infrastructure and destroy their plans. But they're still here. They have plans. You can't get attached to anything. You know, listen, I don't own a house. Where I grew up, just the one town over from where I grew up, very well-off place. That's another thing. I grew up rich. My parents were rich. <laughs> you know, decades later, I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't bank on any of that. But uh, just the one town over, there are people that have five, ten million dollar homes. And uh, there's a landslide that has completely destroyed the place, destroyed the infrastructure. They don't have any, uh, and this is like one of the richest places in California. They don't have any electricity, they don't have any running water, and they don't have any sanitation. And they have been paying into uh, insurance for their house for decades. And the insurance companies say, we don't cover that. It's an act of God, landslide. We don't cover that. And so they have to still pay their mortgage. And they have to still pay their taxes. But they can't live in their home. Do you how much you want to bet if they could walk away from their mortgage millions of dollars that they owe the bank how much i mean if they could get back what they put into it and walk away and buy another house or just rent another house how many of them do you think would take that and now they're destitute uh the whole idea of owning a house i think is absolutely ridiculous a mortgage is latin for death grip I don't own anything. I don't own a house. This house gets destroyed by, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be out of here in two weeks. I rent a house that gets destroyed by a hurricane. I got everything I need in my suitcase in the back of my Jeep. I'm fine. I'm living one day at a time. One 
you know, two weeks at a time at most. I recommend that lifestyle. So it just takes away a lot of the worry because what people worry about is how are they going to pay their mortgage? How are they going to, what's going to, they're going to do their retirement? And uh, people worry about that nonsense and money doesn't even exist. And, and I'll, I'll give you some links on where to go to find out how, how money is, an, is, a, is a Ponzi scheme. The money is a Ponzi scheme. Forget about society. Money itself is a Ponzi scheme. It's never meant anything. All right. We're going to end on that. Huge changes are coming. Be aware. Live for each day. Again, go to thunderwizard.com. Check out all of the ways that you can tap into all of these life hacks. I'm still taking apprentices. So you can subscribe and be an apprentice and work with me uh, anywhere between once a week or once a month. It's completely up to you. We have live Zoom group classes, which are specifically for people who are trying to get their minds around this shift and this change. It's a very helpful thing. The new Atlantean Egyptian path to becoming God meditation is available both for subscribers. If you're at the 90 day or above, you get that for free. And uh, you can also just purchase it. A few people have already started purchasing it. And again, my books, michaelwilliamdenny.com. Live guided interdimensional meditations. There's live ones already up there on the live section of uh, the YouTube channel. Go check them out. But if you want to be part of the live ones, I highly encourage it. I, I appreciate all the help I can get every Wednesday and Saturday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's it, my friends. Like, subscribe, comment, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's it. So... Lots of good stuff coming. I think there's going to be a lot of heavy-duty solar activity. It's just my guess coming up in the next couple of weeks. I think that comet fragment is going to go by. I just got hit with some energy as I said that. That comet fragment, the Atlas comet fragment, the second one is going to pass in front of the sun in a couple of days. I think that's going to create huge energy. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but we'll see what happens. I love you all, my friends. Please be very good to yourselves. Thank you for, uh, for listening, and uh, I shall see you all very soon. Uh...